Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be using a magazine as a reference image for painting a face. So I've got this image I've cut out of a fashion magazine that I'm going into my Dina Wakeley journal. And I've just trimmed it down so it fits onto the page mostly. Um, and just putting some glue over the top of it again. So you can see it's a little bit wrinkly, a little bit of texture on it. That's okay. I'm going to be painting over it anyway. And, you know, <laughs> I'm sure I'll have people asking me, well, why paint over it if you've just glued it into your book? But the reason I'm doing it is because I wanted to paint a picture of a face. Um, because I'm not necessarily confident, particularly at drawing the sort of that side view of a face, I wanted to have a bit of a reference of doing it. And basically all I was doing was um, I wanted to practice sort of my shading of faces. So by having a magazine image there already, it gives me a, an idea of where the dark areas of the face are, where the lighter areas of the face are to start off with. I'm just starting by going in with some gesso to paint in her hair. So I want this really um, sharp bob, I suppose, on her um, hair to begin with, and I'm just drying that off. So again, you can sort of see it all wrinkly, you know, and it may bother some people, to be honest. It's just, it's just the way most of my artwork <laughs> works anyway. <laughs> So I'm going in now with some lighter skin tones. So on this channel, in previously, I'm sure you've seen me paint faces before, and quite often I will paint with some really random colours. And the reason I do that is because I can really easily see the um, mid-tones, the highlights and the lowlights, so where the shadows are. I find personally with painting with um, skin tones that I struggle a little bit with that. So I started off with a very, very pale, um, I think it might have been sand, and then I've gone on in with an apricotty colour, and now I'm going in with a little bit of umber for my darker colours, um, just to get those shadows back on the um, image again. So I'm doing really transparent layers so I'm not necessarily thinning out my paint I'm just putting very little amount of paint on at a time and really spreading it out so it's quite thin so I can still kind of see what's going on underneath on my magazine image um, and got a little bit of idea of you know where's lighter where's supposed to be lighter where's supposed to be darker uh, so having those um, highlights and lowlights underneath is really, really helping. I did find after a little while that actually um, rubbing paint on with my fingers really helped out a great deal um, and gave me a little bit of control. Once I've just put my um, layers of paint on, I'm now going in with my scribble sticks. And the reason for that is just to give that little bit of extra detail and shadowing onto my page. I'm also going in with the whites of the eye, again, to sort of really draw them out. And you'll notice it looked almost alien-esque until I put those whites back in again. So um, by drawing attention to the eyes really makes whatever you're doing look human. And um, particularly when you put the catch-alls into the little white bits in the eyes, that really helps to find the eyes, make them look like it's a living person. A lot of artists start off with the eyes first, get them looking right. So while they're drawing, it actually looks like a real person the whole time. I often find that I put the eyes in in my last part of the um, process because I usually stuff it up in some way, shape or form. <laughs> so um, that's, that's why I leave them to last. But if you're really struggling looking at an alien, possibly work on your eyes first and then go back. I'm just going in and brightening up her lips as well with a little bit of red. I had this idea with the hair, which is um, why it looks sim similar to that. I saw a really cool, I think it was James Luke Burt Creative, had done this image with these really strong um, bangs, um, just using a white pen across it, which I really loved. But it didn't work so um, I decided I would paint over that again 
I kind of tried drawing over the top but it just it wasn't working for me so I decided to get my my paint pens out and um, just repaint over it. I've kind of made her um, fringe just a little bit more choppy I suppose um, so it's uh, not quite as um, straight as it was once was and I'm just trying to dull down the um, the amount of white that I had in the page and then I just gave up and got the black gesso out again so you know you can always save something with the white gesso a uh, black gesso sorry <laughs> white gesso works the same so by getting rid of um, that white I thought I'd go in again so I did put a little bit of detail back with a white pen um, just with a fine pen this time just to sort of outline it somewhat and um, pop it out from the rest of her face and I suppose that sort of takes away from the magazine image somewhat and makes it look a little bit more cartoony um, but I quite liked it I sort of could I suppose almost be a sort of a helmety type thing over her face I didn't like the white line around the face though which I think is why I'm painting that out again so I just left it with the, uh, the white of the fringe and I think I go back, no, I, um, I was going to say, I think I go back and make the, the rest of the, the haircut look a little bit more choppy. But I didn't. And looking at this in hindsight, I probably would have done something with the left hand side of the hair just to make it look a little bit more angular as well. But to be honest, my main focus on working on this was trying to get the face as realistic as possible. So that's why I'm using a magazine image to do that. Now, as I did this, I thought, oh, okay, I really quite like this, but what have you done? What are you going to do with the background? Because I didn't quite like the, um, the stark black on it, uh, stark white on it, so I thought I might have to do something with that. So that was a little bit of a conundrum while I was sort of finishing it off. I've just added on a little bit of Stipula Oil Pencil to add, add a little bit of extra um, shadowing to her face as well, particularly around her eyes. A little bit hard to get in there with the paint brushes, so I wanted to um, add the, the shadow from the, the Stabilo oil pencil. This is a quote from the same page of the magazine, which I really liked. Um, so positive, positivity is sometimes difficult to come by, but it's certainly worth working on, which I really liked. So in the end, once I thought about it a little bit, I just got a little bit of Sedona really watered down and um, put the contrasting colour in the background. So you can sort of see in the close-up how it is that painted image. Even though it's got the magazine image underneath, it just gave me something to really help me work on my shadowing and it gave me the confidence to try painting a face. So if you are really unsure about how to paint, Paint over a magazine image, whether it's flowers, a face, you know, clothing, whatever it is, just have a go. Look at the highlights and the lowlights, the shadows and the highlights, and um, find your bliss. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye for now.